This is Chanel Boxley. Chanel says her daughter was taken from her by the Department of Social Services CPS Division, also known as Child Protective Services, for an unfounded claim of abuse and neglect. And despite CPS ultimately determining that abuse and neglect was unfounded, Chanel still has not gotten her daughter back. Chanel says the Mercy House shelter retaliated against her by making a complaint to the Harrisonburg Rockingham Department of Social Services, claiming that Boxley abused and neglected her daughter. My daughter was left outside of the daycare by a daycare by herself and I went and made a complaint on them but before I made the complaint I asked them to have a meeting and a sit down for them to give me some type of explanation of how my child got left which was Shannon Porter the director of the Mercy House he basically refused and said she wasn't harmed and she was safe, so I should just let the situation go. And as a mother, that's not what's going to happen. That's not what I was going to do. So I took the step forward to make a complaint on the daycare with the Rockingham Police Department. And basically nothing was done um, out of that situation was a false complaint that was made on me saying I left her at the daycare by herself, which opened up a CPS case, and they came in and removed my child. Boxley said that's where it all started and that her life has been torn apart piece by piece since then. It's been a, a real struggle, a real struggle, and I'm trying to maintain every day, and even though I've won, I still don't have my child. Despite the Harrisonburg Rockingham Department of Social Services determining that the complaint against Chanel for abuse and neglect was unfounded, they told her that she had to cooperate with the Lynchburg Department of Social Services. And in a letter dated August 20th of 2018 and signed by Jessica Henderson, a family services specialist with CPS, it is mentioned that the allegations of neglect or abuse were unfounded and informed Chanel that her service case will be transferred to the Lynchburg CPS and that a worker would contact her. According to Chanel, she ended up moving to Durham, North Carolina, where she purchased a car and obtained housing for her and her daughter. Chanel said, meanwhile, a hearing was being held in the Harrisonburg Rockingham Juvenile Domestic Relations Court without her or her daughter's dad being present, and that a judge issued a capius for her arrest for failure to appear and ordered that Chanel must turn over physical custody of her child to the child's father. What happened was they took me to court without me or her father being present and ordered some stuff. Ordered her for her, this is Harrisonburg, ordered her to go with her father. Her father lived in Lynchburg and for the case to be transferred to Lynchburg. All the while, the child is with me and we're in North Carolina. So if I'm not in court to know this, then how am I supposed to know she's supposed to be with her father? So she was court ordered to go with her father. And then they set another court date. Well, I wouldn't know nothing about the court date if I wasn't at that court date. So when I didn't appear to the court date, they issued a capious for my arrest for failure to appear and issued an emergency removal because she wasn't with her father. When the authorities finally found Chanel and her daughter in North Carolina, they took her child. So Chanel returned to Virginia, only to be incarcerated on a capious for failure to appear in court. She was incarcerated for more than 30 days and lost everything. I had housing in North Carolina and I had a vehicle. Being that I was, I was, I had like two payments left on my vehicle. Um, so, but being that I was locked up over 30 days, the payment wasn't made. The people came and got their car. To add insult to injury, Chanel's daughter was sent to foster care and not to live with her father. Chanel said when her daughter was living with her, she was always well-dressed, well-groomed, and loved. But while in foster care, she developed rashes, had bald spots in her head, was dressed in mismatched clothing, and was slapped in the mouth by her foster parent. While she was in foster care, she's been abused as far as smacked in her mouth. Um, she has plugs in, the, in her hair. Um, she has a big bald spot in her hair. She's, her hair, like, was, it looked like it was cut, or it might have broke off to where they wasn't treating it properly. Um, she had patches all over her. They look like wing worms, but they tried to tell me it was eczema. Well, my child has never had eczema. Chanel said her daughter spent 11 months in foster care until finally her daughter's father filed the necessary paperwork to bring his daughter home. Court records show that on August 1st of 2019, a judge awarded legal custody to both Chanel and her daughter's father, Michael Jefferson but that Jefferson was awarded physical custody of their child. I have legal custody. Me and the father has legal custody back, but he has primary physical custody. 
And he's not basically trying to give her to me because I don't want to be with him. That's basically what it boils down to in so many words. Because why would, knowing this situation, knowing a child was ripped from her mother for no reason at all, and the child has never been apart from her mother, why would you continue to keep her away from her mother? That, that doesn't make sense to me, knowing that you wasn't doing what you were supposed to do in the beginning. During all of this, a protective order was put in place against Chanel, stating that she cannot abuse or neglect her daughter. The order does not stop her from seeing the child or being in her presence, but simply states she cannot abuse or neglect her daughter. Now, some people will say, what's wrong with that? Chanel says since the basis of the protective order was unfounded, the protective order should be null and void. And the fact that it is still in place also hinders some of her other rights as an American citizen. I have a protective order on me until my child turns 18. So that means you're violating my rights because I have the right to bear arms. But I can't bear arms with a protective order against me. There's certain things I can't do because it's a protective order against me. Against my child, against a, a, a baby, a child. So you, on paper, you making it, making me out to be a monster. Chanel has filed a motion to dissolve the protective order with the Rockingham County JDR court. She has a court date set for November 6th, 2019 at 1.30 p.m. Chanel said she just wants her daughter back and that she won't stop fighting until that happens. The lawyers tell me, oh, you definitely got a case and you definitely need a lawyer. Because you definitely got a lawsuit, but they just can't take it. So I don't know if it's them scared of going against the state or what the situation is, but it's somebody out there that will take the case because it's definitely a case. And I've already done the legwork for a lawyer. Like, they don't even have to go and get all of this stuff because I didn't already got it. So, I mean, I don't know. All I know is I want my child back. I deserve my child back because my child should have never been removed, which the paperwork clearly states that she shouldn't have never been removed and no one has shown evidence of abuse and neglect. So you tell me why I don't have my child and why am I in the situation that I'm in? In Harrisonburg, Theodore Whitelow, Breaking Through News.